I'm attempting to complete every single GameCube game, and I'm using a random number generator to pick the next game. Last episode, we forged our way to the NFL Hall of Fame in Madden NFL 07, and in this episode, we're diving into a buddy cop classic and playing Bad Boys Miami Takedown. Bad Boys Miami Takedown was released on September 14th, 2004, and was developed by Blitz Games and published by Empire Interactive and Crave Entertainment. This game might be one of the worst games we've played for in this challenge so far. Before we get started, make sure to like this video because it helps out the channel, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any of the future games. Without further ado, this is my experience with Bad Boys Miami Takedown. In Bad Boys Miami Takedown, we're going to go through the new game to consider this one complete. Bad Boys has a tutorial at the beginning, which we're going to go through because I didn't know how to play the game, and I thought it would be a good idea. That being said, the first mission of the game is called Target Range. This has our main character in a shooting range, learning the controls of shooting and hiding behind cover. Bad Boys plays as a third person shooter, and we can shoot the enemies dead, or since we're cops, we can aim to disarm the enemies, which is the recommended choice, but I wasn't trying to do this very much when I was playing the game. The game opens up with a cutscene of two agents going into a diner. When the female agent is talking to the people inside, the car blows up outside and the male agent was inside of the vehicle. This makes our main characters have to show up to the diner and the game begins. The first actual mission in the game is called A Death in the Family and it's part of Act 1. This game has you play through acts, and then there are missions that break up the acts. This allows for us to keep track of our progress in this game, which really helps out. When the mission opens up, we get to play as Will Smith's character, Marcus Burnett. The game plays like a third person shooter where you follow a linear path in each mission to advance the plot. Our partner, Martin Lawrence's character, Mike Lowry, joins us in this mission and we will switch every mission which character we get to play as. I think this was a nice touch to the game. With all that done, we open up the game by clearing out the diner to rescue the female agent. While playing, we can find health boxes on the ground to heal our character, which honestly you won't need much of these throughout the game because it's pretty easy overall. Once we clear the diner, we have to go out into the alleyway to get to the other side of the diner for some reason. I don't know why this happens exactly. There's probably just a door leading to the back, I would assume. We clear out the kitchen and we're able to save the female agent. And we find out that there's history between all of the characters. Because of course there is. Then we have to work our way through the alley behind the diner and get to the arcade next door. One thing I want to point out is that if you shoot things in each area, it will cause damage and we will have to pay for it. So to get a better rating for the mission, it's best not to destroy everything you see. Hidden around the levels, you can come across body armor, which is why you'll never need health, and ammo boxes to refill your ammo on special weapons, and grenades, which are helpful. Our pistol has unlimited ammo though, and it's pretty useful throughout the game. Once we clear the area, we leave, and that's the end of the mission. A cutscene happens after, but it's just us leaving the building. Nothing crazy. At the end of each level, you get a rating that shows you how much damage you did in the stage, evidence found which can be found around the level and help your rating for each stage, disarms which is not killing people, execution which are headshots, kills, and accuracy for that stage. And it will tell us if we unlock anything new for the game too. The first stage gives us a mugshot. On to the next stage called Confronting Demons, which has us breaking into a beatdown mansion. We first have to clear out the courtyard of the mansion, and it's filled with bad guys. I'm going to skim over these parts going further, because it's a lot of the same stuff over and over again, and I'll just point out stuff about the story or anything new we're able to do. We clean out the basement and find our first evidence, which is drug money in the basement. Like I said, if you collect these, it gives you a better cop grade at the end of the act. In this game, we can shoot down House of Cards, and I love doing this because it made me laugh. Also, it gives you $1 towards your damage, which is amazing because who would really have thought they'd be adding that to the game? 
We clear out the main floor of the mansion with our new weapon, an Uzi machine gun, which does massive damage but sprays pretty bad if you shoot it too long and don't just shoot and burst. We clear out one of the bedrooms. Look how nasty this looks. There's just mattresses all over the floor. And of course we break the TV because we can't let them have anything nice in life. Then we get our first boss fight of the game with a man named Basu and he's really easy. He shoots like grenades at us, but if you wait and cover, you can take him out with no real problem. After we beat him, we get this cutscene where he jumps off the balcony and takes off in a car. And that's the end of the mission. We get our stats and find out we unlocked a new target range challenge, which I never did, so I don't even know what those are. Finally, we're done with Act 1, and we get our stats for the whole act, which covers your total evidence found, how long it took us to complete the act, how much damage we did in each stage, total disarms, total executions, and what our bad boy rating is. In this act, we get Lawman, which I have no idea what that means, but uh, cool, I guess. On to Act 2. Act 2 opens with a stage called Withdrawal Symptoms, and starts with a cutscene that shows this woman shooting Basu and killing him in cold blood. Or I assume that's what's happening? I'm not sure. She's not holding a gun or anything, so maybe it's something else she uses? I'm not sure. We open up this stage with clearing out an attempted bank robbery, and this just has you go inside and clear out all the bad guys. It's pretty straightforward. Once we do that, we get a cutscene where a car speeds by the bank and then loses control and crashes. The same woman as before gets out and runs into the alleyway. You know what that means. We have to run through the alley and clear out all the enemies and we pick up some evidence along the way. Then we get a cutscene where two big guys cut us off and she gets away by running into a building. We take them out and finish the stage. We did pretty decent in this stage and even kept our accuracy above 50% for once. The next mission is called Russian Connection and opens up with us clearing out the kitchen of a restaurant and even finding the frozen guy hanging out in the freezer. I'm not sure what he did to deserve this, but we don't have the time to figure that out now. We'll just leave him there. We have to catch the lady and move into the dining area of the restaurant, where we hang out behind the bar for a bit and take out enemies as they flood the area. This was neat, I guess. Made me feel like I just had to hold the fort down. We head up to the second floor of the restaurant and find more seating and these giant fish tanks, which of course I had to see if we could destroy. And we can! And it will cost us a bit of money and damages too. We get a cutscene where we head up to the roof and then when the cutscene finishes, we're back at the bottom of the stairs again. I thought this was funny, so I added it in. Then the stage is over. The next stage is called Straffling Run and has us moving from rooftop to rooftop, taking out enemies, and trying to catch up with this mysterious woman. Then we get to the end of the roofs and come across the next boss of the game. It's the mysterious woman flying a helicopter, which we've seen her in the opening cutscene of this act have. And now we have to shoot this thing down. The fight is pretty easy, but it takes forever to get the health of the helicopter down. We have to wait for it to fly in where we are, and then we can shoot the windshield and the motors of the helicopter. I died in this boss fight for the first time in the game because it was just taking so long to do any damage. I figured out that in the first phase of the fight, it's better to use the handgun, and then when you get the cutscene showing that the motors are starting to give out, and she starts shooting missiles at us, we switch to the Uzi and try to do as much damage as we can with the ammo we have. We get a cutscene when we get its health all the way down and it crashes and kills her inside. This was satisfying after shooting it forever. For some reason we just stay there and look off into the sunset when we're done taking the helicopter down. And then the stage is over. We did good in this stage and was able to get all the evidence along the way. That's the end of Act 2, and overall we did pretty good, and got Lawman as our rating for this act again. On to Act 3. Act 3 opens with a stage called Shooting Gallery, and opens with a cutscene of us sneaking into a museum at night or something. I think this is breaking the law, but what do I know? We have to clear out the first floor and head into the hallways on the second floor, till we make it into the security room of the museum. And then we can watch all the cameras as Marcus can go the other direction in the museum. That's the end of the stage, so this was pretty short and nothing really happened along the way. The next stage is called Deconstruction, and as I mentioned before, it's now Marcus's turn to go through the museum and cause problems. 
Breaking the sculptures in the museum causes us a lot of money and damage, and we get to 14,000 really quickly. We get another cutscene where we find out that there are two people in the museum that are working out some deal for money and drugs, I think. I'm not sure exactly. Sometimes it's hard to listen to the dialogue in this game. When we get control of Marcus again, we enter an area where it's filling up with gas and we need to search the rooms in that area and find a gas mask so we don't die. This was a much needed change in gameplay, even if it's only for a minute or so because it was starting to take a toll on me. We find the mask and make our way down into what looks like some sort of drug lab. I'm assuming they're making meth or something in these labs and using the museum as a cover for their illegal activities. We have to clear out all the enemies in the area and at one point I thought I was going to die because I was just running around the area instead of using cover. After clearing out the lab we're trying to escape as the hallway is blowing up and we get stuck behind a door. Mike is trying to unlock the door for us but he isn't having much luck until finally it looks like we're going to die in the fire. And with our luck the door finally blows off and we come flying out. I think this would have killed our character, or at the very least we'd have suffered a lot of physical damage. And we wouldn't be able to just carry on the mission like, oh, you know, something, nothing happened. But since this is bad boys, he's perfectly fine. And we end the stage with the most amount of damage we have done so far, and having the lowest accuracy too. We did so good in this stage, but we're able to move on so I'm not complaining. The stage is called escapism, which, is this even a word? Let me know down in the comments if this is a word. This follows Mike and Marcus as they're trying to make their way out of the museum. We start upstairs and have to clear out a stupid amount of bad guys, more than I've seen anywhere else in the game so far. That's all that takes place in this stage, and honestly, it was super short compared to some of the other ones we've done so far. We ended up doing a lot of damage in this stage, $318,000 in damage worth. The police department would not be happy about that. That's also the last stage in Act 3, and we finish the act with an average cop rating, which isn't very good. Oh well, on to Act 4. Act 4 opens with a stage called Covering Fire, and starts with us giving cover to Mike as he moves his way through a shipping dock using a sniper rifle. These are some of my favorite things in these old GameCube games, and was something I really liked in Tom Clancy when we covered that towards the beginning of this challenge. The sensitivity in our aiming for the sniper is something you have to adjust to, but I really enjoy my time with this stage. That's all that happens in the first stage of the act, and I even had a 60% accuracy with the sniper rifle, considering it was my first time using it. The next stage is called International Trade, and opens with Mike listening to a conversation with a man we thought was dead or something. I don't really know, it doesn't set this up beforehand. Mike talks during this cutscene, and he's so loud that they would have for sure heard him way before he blows his cover. We have to clear out the warehouse and get back outside. Once we get outside, we have to clear out some more enemies in the shipping containers, and then we get another cutscene where Marcus climbs up this crane and decides he's going to jump from the crane onto the boat that has the, the bad guy from the cutscene in it. They attempt to make this dramatic, but at the end of the cutscene, I wasn't impressed with it. Once we get on the boat, we find out that the girl agent from the beginning of the game is being held hostage by the bad guy. Akamov? I think that's how you say his name. And Mike has to take him down using the sniper without killing her. This part was super cool. It's timed so you can't wait and line up the shot forever, but when you finally can take the shot, it's very satisfying. I love the way the camera follows the bullet and shows us a close up of the bullet hitting directly in the head. It's so good. We get a cutscene after where Marcus and the female agent are talking with some of the worst dialogue ever. And then that's the end of the stage. Pretty fun stage overall and it's also the end of act 4. This act was extremely short and only took us 21 minutes to finish the whole thing. We get the lawman rating for the act and move on to the last act of the game, act 5. Act 5 opens with a stage called Landing Party and has us arrive to this really nice mansion via boat. And again, we get this weird slowed down jump from the boat to the dock for some reason cutscene. And it just seems pointless. More than making this seem epic or something, it's just, it doesn't feel natural. It's weird. 
Anyways, the stage opens with us playing as Mike, and we're clearing out enemies in the courtyard heading towards the mansion. Another basic area, but makes sense based on the size of the mansion. About halfway through the stage, we switch back to Marcus and have to use the sniper again and protect Mike as he makes his way through the area. I like this because it made me feel like they're a team for the first time throughout the whole game. Also, the enemies in this area are military uniforms, which I think is cool because it's not just generic bad guy over and over again. That's the end of the stage, and we cost zero dollars in damage in this. The first time all game that I was able to do that. The next stage is called the Inner Sanctum, and has us starting in the basement of the mansion with a bunch of wine barrels and stuff. I would think this is the basement of the mansion. Once we get so far, we get a cutscene with the female agent finding her old partner stealing money from a safe, and we find out that he was alive the whole time and faked his death to work with the bad guys in the game. That's pretty messed up though. Then it changes back to us playing as Mike, and we get a cutscene where we're thrown around by a big guy we've seen in one of the previous missions, and we have to fight him in a boss battle. This fight is interesting because you just have to hide behind these pillars and move from pillar to pillar, avoiding getting shot by his massive Gatlin gun and shoot him when you can. Once his health gets so low, he drops the Gatlin gun and uses a shotgun and grenades. This doesn't change the fight other than you have to move from pillar to pillar more often and watch out for grenades. Fun boss fight, but it's pretty easy overall. Once he's dead, we get another cutscene where Marcus and Mike meet up again and sets up the last stage of the game, where we're going after the guy in the Hawaiian shirt. It's the end of this stage, however, and we did pretty good in this section of the game. On to the last stage of the game, called Finishing Business. This has us playing as Marcus, and we have to clear out the top floor of the mansion with Mike, and then we head into an area with the final boss. His name is Mendoza. This fight is weird, because for some reason he has like a mounted... I don't know, machine gun, grenade launcher, missile shooter, gun that you would see in like World War II just randomly in, in, in this room of his mansion. I don't understand it. When the fight starts, we have to move back and forth in the room and shoot where the shield doesn't protect him. Then Mike moves closer to him. I don't know why this is the method of this boss, but it is what it is. We have to repeat this for a while and try not to get shot ourselves. I like this boss fight, but I think it's strange that he has this weapon. I think the gun shoots like grenades or something, which would destroy the room? I, I don't know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. When we get to the end, we're really close to dying, and then Mike gets close enough to throw a grenade like one foot from the guy. I don't know about all this, I, this whole fight is so weird to me. We get another cutscene showing us standing over him as he cowers in fear, and then he reaches in his shirt and he pulls out a gun and shoots Marcus's gun out of his hand, and then sits there forever and waits for us to shoot him back. We can play as Marcus again and shoot him one time with our handgun, which triggers a cutscene where he falls out of the window and down to the first floor of the mansion. This was such a strange boss fight. Then we get our last stats for the stage and for the act. In the final act, we got the best possible rating and got perfect cop, finally. And then the credits roll. I wouldn't recommend this game, to be honest. The gameplay gets old pretty quickly, the dialogue is really bad in this game, and the story is pretty over the top and doesn't make much sense. So I would skip this one if you're trying to play all the GameCube games. If you want to know what's next, stick around, but if not, thanks for watching and remember to subscribe, like, and share this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Alright, uh, we have a total of 5, 5.45 left. We got our GameCube list up and ready to go, and on the count of three, we are going to figure out what we are playing next. So, three, two, one. 26. When, what is it? What is it? It's all the way at the top. What is it? What is 26? Backyard football. Which brings up nothing.
But there is definitely a backyard football game. Because I, I remember I left it on there for that reason, and I also owned it. Um, it's it's a little weird, but I, I, it's not too bad. We're going to take that off our list. And uh, Backyard Football is the next game. 